Prince has been honoured with a record-breaking 21 Tony Awards. The legendary producer and director's credits include West Side Story, Fiddler on the Roof, Phantom, Evita, Cabaret, and of course multiple pioneering works with Stephen Sondheim. The theatrical icon invited Broadway.com to his offices in New York City here today to talk about his latest project, Prince of Broadway, a retrospective and more. <laughs> At the yeah. very beginning, you're sort of on stage, as it were. You talk about luck. So oh, God, yes. Yeah. Broadway. You've won 21 Tony Awards. A How Prince production has been running for 58 years out of the past 60 years on Broadway. There's more than luck that's going on there. Well, no? <laughs> I, yeah, well, you talk to my wife, she'd say yes. No, you know, of course it's more than luck. But some people have bad luck, mm. and they can be as talented as people we know yeah. and if you have bad luck you have bad luck I say early in the show very early you have to be at the right place at the right time and uh, and the times that you work in are very important mm -hmm. too so there is luck uh, there's bad luck too now you're <coughs> busy at the moment you've got the band's visit off Broadway which I want to get to yep. and Prince of Broadway mm -hmm. now that's been in the works a long time hasn't it yeah and, and very good too, because it's been four years. The thing about it is, when you're doing a compendium of everything you've done before, selecting the material, mm -hmm. and then deciding where, what should follow what, yeah. organizing that is really uh, flying blind. So I called Andrew Lloyd Webber about this interview. Funnily enough, he took my call. Dad, everyone, <laughs> sorry. Um, and he said, the thing you've got to understand about Hal is this. In 1975, Dad had this big flop musical called Jeeves in London. It ran for 38 performances. I so remember. You said to him after it, and obviously he was probably devastated, young guy, um, you can't listen to a musical if you can't look at it. And he's taken that advice on board. And he says, what you have to understand about Hal is concept. You always have a concept. Well, it's only, uh, I, I, I wish, it were true that I always had, mm. because uh, I failed one show miserably. Thank God, not Andrews. Uh, but uh, Merrily We Roll Along yeah. is a show with a great score by Sondheim, and I never could see what it would look like. And I should have stopped right then, because that's the key for me. The minute I know what a show is going to look like, I'm in in a good place and you've got there with prince of broadway yes sure absolutely what we've done is the show is takes place in an empty theater mm -hmm. but we deliver scenery for all the shows o over 20 something shows and the scenery is very close to what the original was but it never totally fills the stage so you always have in shadow uh the space behind it, mm -hmm. which is useful. The idea is to play a kind of old bag of tricks mm -hmm. with, with the scenery, and that, that freed the whole experience for me. You grew up in New York. Do you remember the first show you ever saw? Mm -hmm. You it? bet. I saw Orson Welles in Julius Caesar. Now, what my, what my parents were doing, taking an eight-year-old <laughs> kid to see Orson Welles and Julius <laughs> Caesar, I'll never know, but I'll always be grateful because I remember every moment of the production. And you knew at that moment that you wanted to be in the theater? Yeah, practically Late. from that moment. And I knew I, I, I wanted to do what your old man does. I wanted to write, right. okay. but I wasn't good enough. So the next step was directing. Uh, but you produced first very successfully. Uh, well, that, that I didn't want to do. Really? That's but how I, you start out. You were winning Tonys <laughs> as a producer before you started directing. But I was, working, I was working for George Abbott. I got a job as his office boy mm. uh, for no salary. For six months, I, didn't, I wasn't paid. He stuck me backstage after six months as a, an assistant stage manager. Mm -hmm. And he kept an eye on me. Clearly, I had no idea. He was not the sort of man that you'd think he's knows you're alive. Mm -hmm. He 
he said, you're a director, you know. So you start directing, but it wasn't all plain sailing. I mean, you know, Cabaret took a bit of time to get to. When you're first yes, Tony. actually, <clears throat> it's a, a lot of it is about finding your, your voice. Mm -hmm. The first show I directed for Broadway was She Loves Me, and it's a gorgeous show, really beautiful. And I know I did a terrific job. Mm -hmm. And I know probably because I heard the next day from Richard Rogers, from Leonard Bernstein, saying, I saw your mm -hmm. show. So I knew I could do it, but I didn't have an individual voice. And is that advice you'd give to you know, people watching who are up and coming? They've got to find their voice. Yes, it's very important. It's very important that you find what what expresses you and makes your work unique. And the reason, uh, not the reason, the way I, I discerned that was luck. I was working on a musical version of uh, the Berlin Stories, which mm -hmm. became Cabaret, and I didn't like it. Really? I thought, we're doing a conventional musical. Uh, I expect Gwen Verdon to come out and dance on a table and act a little drunk and it'll be just another jolly musical. Uh, and I went to Russia. You went to Russia? Uh, yeah, just on vacation. In Russia, I saw an experimental theater called the Taganka, and it was uh, run by a man named Yubimov, who just died about two years ago. And everything I saw that night in the theater was unlike anything I'd seen in our country. Really? Yes, the way the lights came up through the floor. The show started in the lobby with a couple of people singing and the whole audience standing around. Then you, the doors were open. But I thought, this guy has triggered my imagination. And it's unique, all of it. A uh, black, mostly black box, which you yeah, now yeah. know from knowing yeah. me, I love and uh, uh, choice props and strange lighting effects and so on, and uh, minimalist, mm. really, because people don't realize that Phantom of the Opera is it's minimalist, really. And Maria, and Maria Bronson. Yeah, exactly. Well, she was just her. brilliant, but her taste was impeccable. However, it's a black box, and she decorated it. So. I really believed in that. Well, when I came back, I said to the authors of uh, what became Cabaret, let's tear up what we've done and do something else. And, and uh, I had remembered in the army uh, going to a little nightclub and seeing this little MC. And we put the MC, the MC became almost yeah. the lead of the show. And uh, the show know. flew, it really did well. Speaking of the MC, you, he's obviously featured in Prince of Broadway um, and singing that controversial number, certainly at the time, the love song to the woman in the gorilla mask. Yeah, right. Is that the most controversial moment that you've ever created on stage? or <clears throat> Sure. One of we did a preview in New York, and uh, it's a, a little German Nazi MC dancing with a gorilla, and uh, at the end, he says, it's a love song. If you could see, see her through my eyes, and he just adores her. But the, the last line is, she wouldn't look Jewish at all. And when that line was spoken, the end of the evening, at the end of the evening, about 100 people stayed to argue. Half the audience thought it was, got it, and yeah. saw what we were doing. And the other half were just offended. Really? And so they fought each other, and the decision was mine because the show was so radical in so many ways. I, I changed it. I wouldn't use that. Uh, by the time the film came out, which is about four, five, six years later, they put that line back in, and, but then everybody knew about Cabaret. Now, Stephen Sondheim, you obviously first worked with him with West Side Story. We, yes, we, we were... We met when I was 20 and he was 18. 
uh, did you at that moment meet this man and think this is the man I'm going to do great work with, or is it just hello, you're 18, I'm 20, hi? No, no how, how you, we work? met and and we hit it off great. And the idea was we both wanted to be in the theater, and we were we had a lot of other friends who wanted to be in the mm -hmm. theater, so it we networked right away, and then we decided we'd like to do something. Uh, Steve's been that close a friend forever. He stood up for me in my wedding, really, which is 53 years ago, practically. It's a long-standing friendship. Can I get a little bit naughty here? So you're in the middle of having this amazing run with Steve in the 1970s, and then you suddenly go and work with Andrew Lloyd Webber. How did that go down? Well, Was he a really good friend? Yeah, sure, <laughs> go work with these crazy British boys no, in London. No, no, I'll tell you what, it's all about talent, isn't it? These guys are incredibly talented. And they have one thing in common. They're Pop theater the guys. They're Pop both the of them. They're, what? They're both born on March 22nd. Yes, I know that. Isn't that wild? Nuts. I, I always send, I don't know if I ever sent Andrew one, but I, I may have. I certainly send Steve uh, a birthday message saying, Dear Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and I would do I, it to dad. My, do suspe that. my suspe <laughs> suspicion is I've sent it to Andrew. I'm sure. Anyway, did Andrew no, ever tell you that he got a telegram for me from me and didn't know who I was? Well, that's embarrassing. I sent him a telegram when I heard Jesus Christ Superstar, and I said I would like to produce that and direct it as a musical on Broadway. Oh, and he didn't get it. Not only that, he didn't answer me, <gasps> and he found the telegram subsequently years later, because it was a real telegram, and framed it somewhere. <laughs> he hated that production of Superstar on Broadway. He'd have loved you to have done it. Well, I wish I'd done it, because I had a handle on how to do it. So how do you get back in touch with a man who supposedly rejected you, except he hadn't? No, well, what had, no he hadn't. He, had, he just he hadn't. didn't know, he didn't who, know you. Uh, who I was. Uh, no, what happened was I went to see Jeeves. The and uh, So you what, saw one of the 38 performances, one of the few people Well, I, I think I, I saw, yes, a preview. Right. And I, this he probably didn't, does not remember. I was opening a little night music with Gene Simmons in the West End right. the week, that same week. Okay. And I thought, I know what I'm working on is a success. Uh, she's, she was radiant mm -hmm. and the material, everything worked. Yeah. And it was beautiful to yeah. look at. There you are. And I thought this, this young guy is so damn talented and he's going to be so bummed out. But I knew it wasn't going to be a success. That's what I wrote. I wrote and said, this is a terrible thing. I'm, I, I don't want to bring you down, but I think it's a very weird week you're facing because mm. uh, I'm opening a musical which tried and true in New York already yeah. and uh, with a big film star and you're opening a show and I think you may have disappointment in and store. So you kept in touch and then So I happened. said, however, you're going to be huge and have a huge career, so just don't let this get you. Now, is it true, urban myth, that at one point there was talk of putting three Ava Peron, three different, three different yes, actors I, to play I, Ava I, it was Yes, I was doing it. I, I, was, I was trying to just reimagine how you tell the story. And it's such a great story. But uh, as I say in Prince of Broadway, uh, Andrew flew to Spain where I had a house uh, with the, the LSO recording. Mm -hmm. And I, he played the first track and it was 200,000 people mourning Ava Perron. And I was hooked. I thought, how the hell do you put 200,000 people <laughs> on a stage? And we did. And, did. And, but film, with the aid of film and a cast, we managed to make them feel that's what they were seeing. So I was just experimenting, experimenting. I thought, I wonder if it, it would be an advantage to have three girls play Ava Perrin because she was really essentially a, a poor girl from a little town yeah. called Hunin, and maybe this is the Cinderella story, and maybe we should have mm -hmm. three different girls do it. And, and then I dropped the idea. <laughs> because guess what? You couldn't find three girls yeah. of equal talent. And uh, uh, 
we cast it well. In Principal Way at the end, there's a very eloquent line about success and failure yes. and flops and hits. I just yes. wonder if you can expand on that. I, I don't give the credit to that, that line to my wife. She said mm -hmm. it to me. We were married a couple of decades, and she said, I'm just sick of your saying a show failed when it was that good. Uh, really? She was talking probably of Follies, mm -hmm. which was an, a masterwork, but it lost all its money. And she said, you have to understand, there's, there's a difference between hit and flop and success and failure. And she said, you've done some hits that were failures as far as you're mm -hmm. concerned. And I know what she's talking about. Anybody who works uh, realizes that sometimes you get away with something and you know it. Yeah. Deep down somewhere you know this isn't as good as I could have done it. What excites you? Because you're doing this fascinating piece off Broadway now, aren't you? As yeah, well? yeah. Well, what, uh, one of the good things is if you decide at one point in your life that you're going to do a compendium, a history of what you've done for 60 years, and you are as eager to continue to work as I am, it's a good idea to do a new show right after it. Is that true? Is that legend true that after opening night, the next day you have a meeting about the it's next show? It's absolutely true. Absolutely true. And that's George Abbott's. He said, always have it a meeting with the authors of your next show at 10 o'clock in the morning the day after your opening. If the reviews are good, you'll regret it because you wish you could stay in bed. And, uh, but if the reviews are bad, you'll be so grateful to move on. Finding new talent must excite you as well. I mean, the Jason Robert love Browns, it. Sierra Bogas, obviously. Love you've it. rejuvenated the role of Christine. Love it, love it. There's a lot of great talent in the mm. new show. And, and uh, half yeah. of them are brand new. No, nobody's heard of them before. Half of them are a wish list of people I've o always either worked with or wanted to work with. But it's a mixed bag. Finding talent is terrific. And you go to Phantom a lot, don't you, here on Oh, Broadway? yeah. I, I rehearse them four times a year, which is pretty good. Yeah. And I drop in. It's a swell place to just drop in. Drop in, Her Majesty's. <laughs> Did Andrew ever tell you that that we never changed a thing in either Evita or Phantom I knew, I knew from the Phantom. first preview. First preview. First preview. The show running right now, 30 years later and 28 years later here, is the same exact show we presented at the first preview. So when it works, it works. What do you make of Hamilton? Oh, I think it's a terrific show. I like the daring of it. And the, the, the idea that they, they're experimenting and generally very successfully. Final question for all those budding producers and directors out there. What? what I'm fearful they take of this you? question. No, no. What, what, would you, what would you advise them? What's the one thing that they should keep in their heads? Well, do it because you want to do it and because you love it. Sadly, it's not as easy no. as when Andrew, and uh, Andrew's much younger than I, but when we all start, it's not as easy anymore. And mostly, In terms of money, it's or? about money, yeah, it's about money. Invited to the party to get shows on mm -hmm. have been a lot of people with a lot of money, but they mistake their taste for what made them make all that money in the first place, which was not shows. What you should do if you're investing in the theater is you should bet on people. Okay. Bet on Andrew Lightweber. Bet on Steve Sonnen. Doesn't always work. No, but. but the odds are good. Yeah. And if you continue to bet on them, it will work. Uh, everybody has failures, please. That's part of the game. But it will work as, as a formula if you just stick with them. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. That wasn't 30 minutes. Yes, it was. Was it really? Bang on 30 <laughs> minutes. She's good.